Welcome everybody to Rapscast. This is episode 15. Sorry about the confusion, but last week we recorded an episode and somehow my vo- my voice, my microphone just didn't work. Anyways, we're back. We're better than ever. Well, it was the be- it was the best podcast ever recorded, by the way. Yeah, we hope this one matches up to that one, but what can we do? That's how it is. Episode 15. Jacob, how you doing? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. This is a little later than the normal podcast, and I look on the other side of the glass, and there's Kyle sitting in the darkness. Yeah. Uh, no light in his room. Yeah. I can't say the same. I'm, I've had a pretty shitty week. I mean, the Raptors got swept. And more than that, they got swept miserably. I have never seen a team give up like that so early in the playoffs. I think they've never seen a team give up like that in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, and you know they wrote themselves off. I think after maybe one or two games, you know. Yeah, I think in the third game there was a technical on Kyle Lowry, and that was just the warning sign. We're about the, the, you know, the ship is gonna sink. The end is nigh. Yeah. Anyways, let's go around the league. Cool, man. Start the show off like that. So the first thing that we wanted to talk about is Scotty Brooks got fired. And now we know that he's being replaced by Billy Donovan. He coached the Florida the Gators. Florida Gators. A very successful coach, won a few NCAA championships, and just a new direction for the Thunder. What do you think about that? I like the idea of, uh, of going to the college system to like sort of recruit coaches. I think it, uh, show, it reflects really hard work by the management squad. You know what I mean? It wasn't yeah. sort of like a lazy call, grab somebody with a resume of you know prior coaching stints in the NBA. Uh, so good for them. I mean, they need to please Kevin Durant. Their window's, you know, getting smaller and smaller with each passing year. So, I mean, hopefully this can be the guy who takes all those pieces together and creates, a, you know, a winning formula in OKC that can, you know, with some longevity. But uh, Scotty Brooks, I feel for you, man. You're a great coach. We love you in Toronto. Yeah. I, I think it's a great move. I think that it's a really, it's a dare to be great move. And Brad, Brad Stevens, I think, was the great example of that, that you give him a long-term contract, dare to be great, and he has paid dividends for the Celtics. But hopefully this will work out, and I think it's a lot better of a move than just grabbing any guy who's bounced around the NBA, and you know he'll be a good coach, but not a great coach, because this is a team that needs to be great soon. So they got to risk it, because they don't want to grab a guy like Mark Jackson, who they know could get them 50-ish wins with that roster, but pretty much any coach can. Get a guy that might be a little rough his first year, but will build a culture. Because that's what sells OKC, is a culture of hard work and a coach that has the potential to be great. So I think they could have gone with two moves that follow that, that path. They could have either gone to the college coaches, which they did, or do what everybody does. Just hire uh, the best assistant coach from the San Antonio Spurs. It's definitely a more gutsy move to grab from the college system. Yeah. It's more of a, you know, of a guess, really. It's more of a guess, but... They've gotten a guy with a very, very established record of winning and setting a culture for Florida. So hopefully it, hopefully it pays off well for them. And, I mean, I'd love to see Kevin Durant in a Toronto Raptors uniform, but hopefully... Do you think this makes that one step closer? Or no. Who knows, really? I think uh, hiring him will keep him in OKC more likely than not. At least keep him interested for a short while. Yeah. Assuming, assuming you know, he could live up to expectations. But I like the move. I think it was a strong, strong move on their part. So the next thing we wanted to talk about is Kevin Love got injured. He's going to be out for the remainder of the playoffs. How does that hurt their chance winning a cup? Um, I mean, it hurts them. Don't get me wrong. You're talking about, uh, you know, a real force of power forward. I still like their shot, frankly, especially in the Eastern Conference. I mean, they're really, uh, they did fantastically well in their first round against, a, you know, by no means one of the elite teams in the Eastern Conference, but a tough out and a, and a scrappy, young, well-coached squad in the Boston Celtics, and I think they really proved their worth. And, uh, you know, Kyrie Irving is, you know, I think reaching his ceiling, and they're really uh, reaping the benefits of that. They've got a great system right now. They're coming together great. Kevin Love, you know, they'll have to make up for his rebounding somehow, but I still have faith in Cleveland. I think the, you know, the strength of their team did not lie in with what Kevin Love brought to the table. And uh, I think they'll be they'll be okay without him. I mean, this is from a guy who called Cleveland for the championship. See, they don't know that. They don't know that because that was done last week. Okay, but here it is. You I guess I haven't changed my uh, my pick. I do still think Cleveland is uh, at least as good a bet as any from you know in the NBA right now to win. It's t- so tough to bet against LeBron James. But uh, look, Kevin Love's gonna hurt him, but I don't think it takes away you know what really makes the Cavs dangerous. Okay. I think it's a bigger deal. I think it's a bigger issue than you think because Kevin Love has certainly had his struggles this entire season. But 
come the playoffs, he's been playing very well, and the team has gone to him more so than they used to because once the playoffs come, it's a shorter rotation, and you really got to give it to the guys that you know will score the ball. Mm. And there's only so many times you could give it to Kyrie Irving. Right, and he right. was learning to sort of accept his role as such. Exactly. And before he got hurt, he was playing a great role on the team in the playoffs. He was spacing the floor, hitting a lot of shots, a lot of three-pointers, getting a lot of boards. And that production, I don't know where it's going to come out of. It definitely has to come out of LeBron James and Kyrie Irving, but they don't have another guy. And I think that you're being a little too... Just, just assuming that he doesn't do so much. He is a great player, and he knows how to win games. I think it does hurt their their chance to win a championship. I didn't think they'd win a championship even when he was healthy. Not yet. Mm -hmm. But I definitely don't think they're going to win one now. I think he is a big factor. And when a team, when they go up, let's say, I'm not saying they're going to get to the finals and it'll be against the Spurs, but remember last year how Kawhi Leonard just had LeBron James' number? When they have that test and someone is able to slow down LeBron James, he needs two other people. He yeah, doesn't have I, that anymore. What I'm saying is I don't think that squad exists in the East. It might not. It might not. So. But I think it definitely hurts their chances to win a playoffs. Get well soon, Kevin Love. Yes, yeah, absolutely. So also, Wiggins, Canadian, a Canadian legend, not yeah, rookie of the year. A Canadian legend uh, in his own right already. Isn't that surprising to say? But it's so true, isn't it? Yeah, definitely deserved it. I, you know what? I, I picked him to get rookie of the year when we recorded the podcast. And then shortly after, I realized I made a mistake. I want Nikola Mirotic to get the award. I thought he would be the underdog to get it, and I thought he deserved it a little more, but I'm happy we can start. Go Canada. Yeah, I mean, I, no one's disappointed, you know what I mean? And that's so tough when you're, like, literally the conductor of the hype train. That was yep. Andrew Wiggins' like college career. And yes. uh, so, you know, that can be tough, living up to that kind of pressure. It's his first year in, like, a totally new... I mean, he's it's a big a factor. In <laughs> yeah, year exactly. one, he's become a factor on a team that literally just has no buzz. Like, they'd be a lot worse without this rookie, mm -hmm. Andrew Wiggins. So Yes, I think he that's... definitely has an impact. Yeah. And he's definitely going to be a hell of a player. And looking back at that trade, we've talked about it before. Kevin Love for him. I don't know if I'd do that trade again, but we've talked about that already. Mm -hmm. But he is definitely an impact player. If not already, then he will be because he, he's just a freak. If he can add a little consistency to the jump shot game of course, of and course. But become a little bit time. of a better passer. That'll come with time. Consistency, give him, give him two, three years. He'll be a nightmare. He's younger than friend. you and I, Kyle. You have to remember that. That's crazy. And he's playing with like grown men who have been doing this professionally for many years. It's crazy. Yeah, I know. It really is. He's a freak. We're goddamn old. Yeah, but like also we're all witnesses to the greatness that is. Andrew yeah. Wiggins. Some people got to watch Muhammad Ali box. Some people Gretzky play hockey. I think that's that's getting a little ahead of ourselves, but I think it'll be, be. I at think it'll be at least, that level. He will be a great Canadian basketball player. You don't think he'll be? He can rise up to like an MVP I hope so, candidate. But Maybe I'm being a homer and just. I hope being, so. That would be great, but I think it's too early to say. Too so. early to tell. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see how he comes into season two. Let's see the work he puts in this off season. Then, then I'll be the judge. Well, you know all of Canada is keeping a close eye on Mr. Wiggins. Yeah, if there is someone who feels the weight of their world, world on their shoulders, it is him. Anyways, with that, let's go to quick predicts. So we prepared a few short questions. I'm going to ask Jacob some. Jacob's going to ask me some. And they're just short. We're not really going to discuss them. They'll either be yes, no, or just quickly They know the, the drill. They know the drill by now. Okay, so why don't you go first? All right. Does the average age of the Raptors increase or decrease during the offseason? Oh, this is the one. Okay. I think it's going to increase. What's Any explanation? <laughs> uh, I think there's two ways the Raptors could go, and one is completely rebuild, or the other is completely retool. I think they're going to... Take the vets in for now. Yeah. All right. Does Messiah, does, Messiah, does Messiah hire a new coach by July? Is the draft before July? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Should T. Ross and JV play in the summer league? T. Ross should. T. Ross, but not JV. Not JV. How come? JV's too good for that. He's too good for that? Yep. Okay. Will Kyle Lowry be the best player on the Raptors next year? No, because that's the marker. Good answer. Will Tyler Hansbrough still be a Raptor next year? I hope not. Will my heart be broken? Yes, because Tyler Hansbrough is leaving. And finally, I know your stance has changed on Lou Williams, but if you can get him for a cheap discount, is he still worth taking a risk on? Was the what's culture? A cheap, what's a cheap discount? Like, give me the contract. Like, 
five, four and a half. Four and a half a year for how many years? Whatever term you want. Two, two you years? You probably are looking for two, yeah. Ah, that's, like, I don't, I, like, I don't want to answer that because I, I don't think that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I think that, I think the cheap deal we're going to get on him is about six million a year, so I'll answer it like that. Well, if the sixth was, man definitely, yeah, you know, makes I think the he's stock gonna rise. Some I'm going to say no. No. I okay. changed my mind. I used to think he'd be, we're better with him than without. Even if we get a bit of a hometown discount, he likes the city. No, I don't think we should resign him. And that brings my quick predicts questions to a close, Kyle. Okay, so here's mine. All right. So, did the Raptors become too cocky this season? Yes, they did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Give me one random thought that's going through Masai Ujiri's head right now. I, I hope I can get the most out of James Johnson sometime in my tenure here. Okay. Give me one prediction of a roster move that's going to happen this offseason. Um, Amir Johnson has played his last game as a Toronto Raptor. Okay. Are the Celtics going to be the better uh, Atlantic Division team next year? It's going to be damn close. If i got to say yes or no... No, I don't think so. No. Okay, talking about the playoffs this year. So, who's going to get to the Eastern Conference Finals? The Cleveland Cavaliers will get there. Okay, and who's going to get to the actual oh, finals in the East? The, who's going to get to the Eastern Conference Finals? Sorry, yeah. I, not who's going to represent the East. Um, it's going to be Cleveland. So it'd be in Atlanta, or well, their series isn't even over yet. Their, though. their series, <laughs> Atlanta or um, Washington. Yeah. So it'll be. The Washington Wizards against the Cleveland Cavaliers in the Eastern Conference Finals. Okay, and who gets to the finals on the east side? On the east, the Cavs. Okay, and who gets to the finals on the west side? I really like Houston. Yeah, okay. Cool. And who wins the championship? The Cleveland, Cleveland Cavaliers. Okay. Cleveland Cavaliers win in seven games. Okay, that's yeah. it. That's all my questions. So we're yeah. going to go to a break, and that's it. Lean forward slightly. Look straight at the speaker. And listen with a sparkle in your eye, as though you might be thinking, gee, this is the most wonderful thing I ever heard in all my life. Welcome back, Rapscast listeners. We hope you enjoyed our break. And we are gonna jump right in to the thick of the thick of the show, the middle segment. It's starting five time, and we're gonna start with the first item, which is really something that I think defined what became of the Raptors towards the end of the season. I want to know if you think this team gave up on Dwayne Casey's message and his motivational, you know, what, what he was trying to do. Did they give up on what on his goals? I think the team really did, and that was very apparent in Game 3. Midway through Game 3, I think Kyle Lowry got a technical foul. It might have been Terrence Ross. It, it was the game where, if it was Terrence Ross, I don't know what game it was, but he threw the ball out of court. And right at that moment, you knew the series was over. Mm -hmm. It was done. And not only was it over, but we were going to get swept right, right then. Mm. That was the moment that the I realized. The psychological battle was yeah, lost. That was the moment I realized that they don't give a shit about what Dwayne Casey says. Mm -hmm. And they have no respect for him anymore. Mm -hmm. So I think that they gave up on Casey. That's that's for sure. That's without a doubt. And I think that his, his message, that whole pound the rock, that whole jazz... I think that's gone onto deaf ears recently because we've seen that there's not a culture in Toronto anymore. There's no hard work. Toronto basketball, everyone's accountable. There isn't that. There's a lot of favoritism. James Johnson, that guy deserves minutes, doesn't get it. So they gave up on him. That's the point. I, I, I think, uh, if I may, yeah, I think Casey was really good at bringing a team together that hadn't yet experienced that much success. A bunch of guys who felt down on themselves, he did expertly well to just motivate them and bring them together to a point where they could be a good basketball team in the NBA. But once they experienced that, and they started feeling a little bit of success, and they got a little cocky, all-stars getting voted in, things of that nature, you know, leading the conference in certain parts, as soon as egos started to come to bat, I think Dwayne Casey kind of fell apart like that. We've seen him have trouble managing guys like uh, James Johnson, who we know has... Yeah. I'm not going to say locker room issues, but he's definitely somebody he, like you know coaches don't have the easiest time dealing with. Yes, And so I think he's very good at bringing guys together and saying, let's get to work. I think that's, that's his real message is let's get to work. But I think once they got to a certain point where they felt like, oh, it's paid off already, you know, I've graduated yeah. from that phase, he couldn't, he couldn't save them from straying. 
And I think they all kind of became a little bit complacent and they all were lost and sort of trapped up in the, our own success of the team. And uh, Casey wasn't, you know, his skill set didn't include managing egos and trying to make guys, you know, g get them back down to earth so they can really play their best and ball. Yeah, and just as, as a part of that, the team just, it just didn't look like they respect what he had to say. Yeah. And I think that was pretty much apparent. We should have realized that even from that last Detroit game that we played in the season, the one where Lou Williams lost for us. It's just, he needs to go. Yeah. I guess that's the point. But we're going to talk a little more about that after. Yeah. So the second thing that I wanted to ask you is, as constructed, I mean, with Dwayne Casey as a coach, and assuming we don't make any drastic changes in the offseason, I guess that means, like, bring back Amir Johnson, bring back Lou Williams, maybe Hansbro, that type of thing. Have we hit our ceiling? Is this the best that the team could do, or is there still another level? With these pieces. Yeah, with saying. these pieces, really, I mean, the core of the team and Dwayne Casey at the helm. I mean, they've got guys who aren't exactly playoff killers. You know what I mean? There's not exactly guys that other teams are going to really scratch their heads about come playoff time. Of course. I, I mean, don't... we are a team that doesn't have a superstar. Yeah, let's that's be, true. Let's be too. clear about that. But I guess let's just stay on point. Have we hit our ceiling? Yeah, yeah. You know, with these pieces, I, I do think so. I think Grievous Vasquez struggles in the playoffs or against tough defense. Um, I think there's there's definitely a lot of holes, and uh, I, I know they'll be addressed, but as far as what the pieces have right now, I mean, think about, like, Amir Johnson and Tyler Hansborough. I mean, the big rotation isn't exactly one of the stronger strong. ones in the NBA. It's just not. You know, even JV, who's a fantastic player, and the potential is there right now, his effectiveness in an NBA basketball game combined with the rest of the bigs and the Raptors, like, that's not where they're going to win basketball games. Of course, we definitely have holes in the roster. Absolutely. And more more so than that, I think that this is the farthest that Dwayne Casey could bring us. Mm -hmm. And we saw that. I mean, there was a comment made by Jack Armstrong that said, every year under Casey, the team has gotten better. And okay, we won 49 games this year. We won 48 games the year before. I mean, one buzzer beater. You know, it's too it's too small margin to say that we did better this year. I think true. Or you could also chalk it up to like, oh, a healthy Demar and Kyle would have made it a better. You know, would have would have changed the face of the season completely. That's true. That's true. I didn't think of it like that. But I think that at with Casey at the helm, this is the farthest we could go. I cannot see him win a playoff series. And we talked so much about that before. That really the playoffs are just a battle of coaches. It doesn't. It doesn't matter so much the talent on the roster. Of course it does. you got to find ways to beat what the other team's but got. It's, it's a tactician's yeah. game. Absolutely. And he's not that guy. He's a, good, he's a guy to get them fired up, but that's where he starts and that's where he ends. So as constructed, this is as far as they go. I think the biggest change that needs to happen if they want to dare to be great is they got to get a great coach. Mm -hmm. And that will bring them from where they are. I think that change alone will bring them from where they are to a second round like threat not not i mean like get to the second round and be a threat and in people the are round. scared of you in the second round that's exactly but it. that's that basically means you're one of the best teams in the nba yes well in the remember in the in eastern, the eastern conference. conference of the nba yeah, yes true in the pussy conference so the third thing we want to talk about masai ujiri he's been in the captain's seat for about two seasons now is his he initially said that He's going to have time to evaluate the team, see the needs, find the holes. Is that time over? That's the first question. And is it time for him to make the mark, his mark on the team? Because largely right now, this is a Brian Colangelo team. I mean, all five of our starters are Brian Colangelo players. He did that one trade. He did two amazing trades, actually, with Bargnani and with Rudy Gay. But for the large part, this is a Brian Colangelo team. So is the evaluation period over, Jacoby? I think the evaluation period is over, yes. I think he knows what he has with this squad, absolutely. Yeah. And I think he's going to look at everything from the, you know, the coaching to each individual roster spot. And frankly, he's got a lot of freedom this offseason. Yes. He can do a lot right now. Yeah. I think he's, he's has a good 17 position. million free right now. Yes. And he's got guys that he can that he can uh, you know give away or whatever like contracts yeah, he's trying he to get rid good. of we have a lot of good assets, exactly. lots of picks. His, his wiggle room, his freedom is is huge this season. So 
I think he, I think he's a really smart GM. Really, I do. I have a lot yep. of faith in him, and I've heard I heard him speak numerous times following you know the Raptors playoff. Exit. I think we're both very high on Masai. Ujiri. I I have faith. I really do. Yes. I think he's going to make the right moves to uh, you know the Raptors will improve this between this year and next year. But to answer your your question, yes, I do think he's about to make very important decisions and very tough calls that are going to shape the identity of the Toronto Raptors, and it's going to happen this off season. Okay. Certain guys are going to be brought in, or you know maybe even more importantly certain men will be left out but i think that the shape and the personality and direction and play style of this team is going to be cemented right now this offseason that's what i think okay i like what you said there you know i think i think this the playoff exit really set the tone that we got to cut the personal connections on the team and when i say that i specifically am referring to amir johnson and I think it kind of opened up our eyes. A lot of us, myself as a fan, let's say in his case, I kind of just want Amir Johnson back because he's Amir Johnson. But I think this playoff exit kind of opened up my eyes that we have to be objective as a team. Mm -hmm. And obviously Masai is doing that. But with Masai, the one thing I wanted to say with him is that a lot of people have given him a lot of, a lot of shit because it's taken him two seasons to evaluate the team. And a lot of fans feel that that is too much time. But... I don't, I don't feel that way, and the reason is he traded Rudy Gay last year, and he almost traded Kyle Lowry, and the thought was that the thought was that trade Rudy Gay, and this team is going to tank, and we're going to rebuild, but that's not what happened. The team started to do very well. They brought in a bench, and somehow had instant instant chemistry. So he had to ride that out. He did, and at the end of last year, he had to say, okay, this team outperformed what I thought. I have to take another look at the team. Mm -hmm. because as constructed this is not what i thought would happen mm -hmm. and he had to extend casey a lot of people were thinking do not sign him i wanted him to get re-signed so did i yeah stand by that he had to reevaluate the team reevaluate casey because casey did a lot better than he expected and now now is the first time that we as fans can realize what the team is at the core this is a team that did not improve this year compared to last and now we have that good we have a proper evaluation of what the team is mm. i think so would you say that yeah well he's he's done a fantastic job of being patient like he had expiring contracts that to most gms that just looks like garbage right that's exactly but it. He, but he I, fought I think the temptation a lot of people are, are faulting him for his patience right but we don't want to become the new brooklyn nets who, that's exactly you know it. what i mean so i i you know, he's a smart guy. He's he really gets guy. how this works. And I think his patience is such a virtue. Absolutely. You know what? If he made all those... My point is that if he made a lot of changes last year, we would be in a worse hole. Yeah, yeah. Because if we... This mm -hmm. team is pretty much the same as last year. And mm -hmm. last year, we were at a point that this is the team that's going to probably, if we could build off it, get to the championships. Mm -hmm. This year, we realized that's not the case. And if he did some drastic moves last year, we'd be in a worse hole. We would have built on a, f a false a faulty, hope. A yeah. faulty foundation. Right, yeah, so absolutely. I, I respect that he's taken so much time, and that's the point I want to make. We are clearly definitely on his bandwagon. But one thing before we move on that I'd like to clarify, Dwayne Casey did good things in Toronto. Yes. Okay, we thank him very much for the service he put in for the squad, and he did improve the team very yeah, much. Yeah. And he, I agree. He did bring a culture to Toronto. And players but, got better under him, and yeah. you know what I mean? Like, but, but they're definitely, it's just... He brought a culture Toronto to Toronto of hard work, mm -hmm. but the problem with a coach that their big skill set is motivational skills is the message runs out. Mm -hmm. And if you look at tangible skills, I mean, he did bring Toronto great defense, but that didn't hold up at all this year. Great offense, but you know, it was more like an offense that took shortcuts. Mm -hmm. And I would say the one thing that I would always be disappointed about it, uh, like that he he could not do is he wasn't really a great player development coach. I mean, Terrence Ross and JV, under a different coach, they might be better players. Mm -hmm. I, I'd say very much so for Terrence Ross. At yeah. the very least. He's a bit of an eccentric, he's a bit of a, like a strange character as yeah. far as NBA dudes go. I love that about him, though. Yeah. But yeah, I, I wouldn't fault him too much. For the large part, he's done good things. It's just his time. And we'll talk a little bit more about Casey soon. He's going to be on another of our starting fives. But there's there's some fits that I could see for him coming this this year if he gets fired. So the fourth thing I wanted to ask you is, just quickly, are we going to have a fire sale? Def define the terms here. Radical changes to the roster. 
as the most radical thing I think, at least in the minds of Raptors fans, is that I believe in my heart that Amir Johnson has played his last game in a Raptors jersey. Okay. So do I say a fire sale? Like no, I don't think we're gonna get. Really I don't think we're gonna, gonna get lot, rid of serious a lot assets. Of moves, a lot of moves in one of two directions: either rebuild the roster, start trading for assets, for future assets, for draft picks, young players, prospects, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Or start trading our young prospects and stuff like that for veteran talent and go for the go for an elite team. You first. Well, I definitely think there's going to be a lot of changes. I think there will be a fire sale. Mm-hmm. What about you? Well, who do you, who do you think is going? Like, what is, you know? We're gonna save that for be a GM. Oh, we're saving that for be a GM. I definitely think there's certain people that the Raptors need to part ways with. Grievous Vasquez would be one. Amir Johnson would be another. I'm still kind of on the fence, and I know this is going to get you very upset. I don't know if Patrick Patterson can be part of a playoff winning team. What? Um, you know, there's how could you say that? There's certain parts of the Raptors that I think need to be either upgraded or just like you can send them one position down on a depth chart. Just put bring somebody in to reduce their minutes and make their role something they can handle. Um, there will be big changes. There's a lot of money to spend here, and Masai. You know, he'll, he'll cook something up in his little basketball lab of a mind on his BlackBerry passport and come up with something that's definitely going to improve this team. I'm not sure exactly what it's going to be yet. Like, exactly. He can go two, one There's or two, two directions. directions. Yeah. You can basically go for a long-term, you know, changing the face of the franchise by, you know, getting basically your hands on youth. And then there's the other way of going, which is bringing in talent that's kind of established and making your team better tomorrow than it was today so i think they're gonna take the latter approach i think that they have players like kyle lowry and i don't think they want to trade him i think he's a good selling point for toronto so they need to appease him they need to win now and that's the direction i think the team's gonna go sell off the young guys bring in older guys who know how to win trade two guys for one guy who's more talented that type of thing Mm -hmm. trade draft picks trade assets bring in more talent get the upside on the squad yeah Yeah. i understand do you what do you think which way i'd i'd rather go with you uh frankly i just think having vets in the nba is is just a very important thing come the end of the year i mean how many young teams shred through the playoffs not that many well if we went the other direction we might not get to the playoffs right right That, that would actually be the point but i also say that because i think as toronto fans We're tired of this shit. And we have been, the team has been here for 20 years. We have a very dismal record of success. It's time that we need to win. And I think that Toronto fans are incredibly loyal. Loyal to a fault even. Because we have been so patient with this team. But we need to start seeing some results. I couldn't agree more with what you're saying. I'm just not sure that Masai is going to look at it that way. But I'm just saying that's the reason I think we need to go in that direction kyle lowry and the good folks of canada (laughs) yeah and i could not disagree more about what you just said about my main man patrick patterson okay that guy is the only guy on the raptors who deserves an increase in role yeah but then every now and then he just can't hit a three and like yes you're right you're you're absolutely dominated by size you are absolutely right absolutely so like yes we don't need to talk about this though okay okay (laughs) so the last thing we talked a little bit about Casey, but is he going to get fired? Um, Masai Ujiri, I think, is not really worth his weight in salt if he doesn't pull the pull the trigger on Casey. I agree, and I think, as you said, if Dwayne Casey sees another season as the Raptors coach, I, I generally blindly believe in Masai, but I will largely question him as our GM if he lets Casey run our team. He's got to have the balls right now to do what's necessary, and as far as I'm concerned, there is no debate. Dwayne Casey's tenure as a Raptors coach is over. It needs to be over. Yes. And if if we, like, as educated Raptors fans, we think that, but there has been a lot of, first of all, a lot of uh, reports coming out that, yes, his future is uncertain, but I think the best one of that is that at the exit of interviews, you had both Lou Williams and Kyle Lowry question him as the head coach. Not directly. I mean, you can't say at the press report, I think he's a terrible coach. Don't misquote, Kyle. Don't misquote. I said you can't say that. I know. Okay. Just... But they didn't give him very much votes of confidence. They both largely said that he's a very good person. He's a very good motivator. But that's where they started commenting about him. But more importantly, that's where they ended commenting about him. It was a political him. correctness type of thing. You yeah. Know? You know, they really didn't say he's an X and O's kind of guy, and we know he's not. They didn't lie. But that's really, they really didn't give him a vote of confidence. Kyle Lowry said something along the lines that 
if he's here next year, I'll play for him. Well, no shit. You have to. What, are you going to sit on yeah. the bench? Yeah. Um, I think the players are smart, and I think they know... Th- I mean, they can evaluate their own team season yeah. as well as you or I can. I think they know, too, that he's not the guy who's going to bring them to the promised land. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so and, think... and, and as soon as that happens... Yeah, That's once, it. He's gone. He has to leave. Once you lose the the yeah. respect from your team, you're gone. Yeah, especially a guy like Kyle. But yeah, the team leader. Yeah. But Demar Derozan did give him a vote of confidence. Said he's a very good coach. So we don't know. But it, That's because Demar guess, Derozan gets every touch in the basketball game. That's, that's true. He has Dwayne to score thirty five points every game. The only coach that will give him the ball every single time, even though he only shoots like forty one. Like, it's basically the here's the Raptors' offense. Give Demar the ball. He runs ISO. It doesn't work for him. He pass the ball and then do it again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But I hope he gets gone. I think he'll leave, and I will really question the Sayujuri if he doesn't. So with that, let's take another break. Yep, yep, yep. Segment three coming up, so stay put. So normally now we do be a GM, but Jacoby and I discussed it might be a little too early to talk about the specifics of what the Raptors might do because we don't know who's going to be a free agent. We don't know if anyone's going to take their player options or not and what teams are going to get out of the playoffs soon. There's a lot that's to be determined. Mm -hmm. So I think this discussion we need to save for a little later on so we could be accurate and really think about it because we want to talk about the direction of the team We've already spoke that there's two directions that we could take, and we both agree that winning now is really important to the team. But I think we have to save that talk specifically about what the team does to get to the next level till when we know who's going to be available, mm-hmm. right? And that all the gen- general managers of other teams have evaluated their team, and we know who's on the market and who's not. The so story's got to play itself out. Yeah, so we're going we're gonna to put that one on the back burner, and we're just going to go right to... The King of the North! King of the North! The King of the North! That was a big lead up just to say that there's no King of the North. Sorry, guys. Nobody deserves it. I almost, I almost get... wanted to toss Patrick Patterson in the mix. <laughs> Just because, I mean, he's the only guy who just didn't bring me to the tears, really, this playoffs. But, yeah. but no, he not even he four game, it. It's a four-game embarrassment, man, to a yeah. team that we were higher seeded than. A we team had a, we a better won. record than them. Like, a team we, we got thrashed. So. We got, yeah, we just got destroyed. And, you know, before the playoffs, I think we were, we were talking a lot about who you'd want to go, who would you prefer to go up against, Bucks or them. I said them. I think you said the Bucks and... We got destroyed by the Wizards, and we would have been embarrassed too by the Bucks. That's how you bad really, you really think so. Yeah, the Bucks fought back against the Bulls, but the Bucks don't have Paul Pierce. That's true, but you know what? The Bulls are a better team than us. Absolutely. There's, okay, absolutely. And they were able to get the the they were able to get the series up to three two from a three zero loss. The Raptors couldn't do that against the Bulls. Not a chance. Yeah, but I think it's a little more like different teams play different. Yes, know, of like, course. It's just a game. It's just a game. It's just a game. Wow. With that, I think we should call it a day. All is life. <laughs> it's not All is game. indeed life. But nobody, back to King of the North, not a soul deserves the King of the North. And I think our first King of the, like, the first person who will get our King of the North on our next one, I can predict it right now. I see the future, okay? Our next King of the North, when the time happens, is going to be Masai Ujiri, and that will be the week he fires Dwayne Casey. Okay, mm-hmm. I see you. I see you made the gun. You made the gun firing, in your, in your, your audio booth. Of firing the gun. Yeah, you're firing the gun. That's, That's going to be Messiah I'll call it right now. That's our next King of the North, but when it happens, to be determined. So with that, let's just go over some housekeeping. So follow us, like us, all that jazz. We're on YouTube, Facebook, Tumblr, Rapscast for everything. We're easy to find, and more importantly, we love when you send us your questions, your feedback on the show, and mostly what you want to hear on our next episode or whether you disagree or agree with us words make us feel better than an illuminated thumbs up icon oh yeah so give us words yeah and more importantly than that i just think that 
we really we want to make this a discussion between people who are passionate about the Toronto Raptors and we love talking about the team between ourselves we love sharing our opinions with you guys but we also want to hear what you have to say just trying to connect so that's it Rapscast episode 15 I guess more like a 14.5 but we're just going to call it 15 if you if you made it this far we know you're a diehard and we love you yeah it's been 15 weeks already I think I say this after every time now but geez time flies and it is late I'm tired so we're going to end the episode see you next week